Hi, this is Frank. I wanted to share with you today how I went about hooking up my Dragonlink um, RF module to my XP8103 uh, JR transmitter. Now when I ordered the Dragonlink system, I specifically requested a cable for a JR radio. And what I received is this cable, which is perfectly fine. Uh, and the way this cable works is you take this connector this, and you plug it into the training jack on the back of the transmitter. Plugs in here and when you do so it turns on the transmitter. So you, you don't need to turn or work the on off switch. You control turning the transmitter on and off by plugging this in or removing it. It turns it back off. All right, so on the other end of this cable is a connector, and this connector plugs into the Dragon Link. If you can see that, if it's focusing properly, it plugs in on that radio input connector. So the signal, uh, the PPM signal, travels down this cable and into uh, the red, and in this case, the blue wire on this uh, connector. The other two wires lead off to a JST connector, which means I have to find an external battery source to power the Dragon Link. Now that may have its advantages, but for me, the disadvantages outweighed the advantages. I'd rather have it so that I can control everything with the on-off switch, right? Rather than t uh, having to plug in. Uh, an external battery. And the external battery you'd probably have to carry along maybe a piece of Velcro or something, uh, probably a two or three cell LiPo that you you could bring along and, and put on the outside of this. But the disadvantage, the other disadvantage in my opinion of doing it that way is um, when you go about binding the um, Dragon Link you have to hold the bind button down while you're turning the power on. And um, it's a pretty simple task to hold the bind button down and flip the on off switch. But uh, I don't like the idea of having to hold the bind button down and then fumble around with some connectors attempting to plug the battery in to, in order to get it to, uh, you know, to energize and go into the bind mode. So this is what I did to go about getting this to work all off the internal battery in in the transmitter. Now my internal battery is a um, 200 or 2000 milliamp nickel metal hydride battery um, and I think that's plenty adequate to power the Dragon Link and my transmitter. So what I did is if you go and look at the back of the transmitter is an RF module on here, right? So if you take the RF module out you'll see that there is a set of pins here that the module plugs into. Hopefully that comes into focus. A set of pins here. And those pins provide this module with everything it needs to operate. So presumably PPM, the PPM signal is on here, the supply voltages are on here, and so on. So it's just a matter of determining what that, what the pinouts are on this thing. So the way I went about it, um, and you, if you've got, and I'll have provide a diagram when, later on here so that uh, you'll be able to actually see what these are, but uh, in case you're doing this with some other type of transmitter, I would imagine you'd follow a similar process. The first thing I did is locate ground. Very simple, used an ohm meter. Um, and was able to, you know, connect, open, had open up the rest of the transmitter, get one end of the ohm meter on the negative side of the battery, and um, go over these pins until I found ground. Once I found ground, it was a simple matter of uh, looking for uh, the battery voltage. It just so happens on the on this system where <coughs> JR is providing six volts on this second pin from the top to this RF module. Well, the Dragon Link doesn't need that 6 volts, so you don't even need to worry about carrying that uh, voltage out to the Dragon Link. 
Uh, and the top pin in this case turned out to be PPM. So um, in, in order to verify that, I, I used my scope, and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna shut this down for a second, and I'll come back as soon as I have my uh, uh, scope configured. Okay, I'm back, and I've got the oscilloscope connected to the JR transmitter. And um, I'm, I got it connected to the top pin uh, that plugs into the um, RF module on the back of the transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And when I do so, I get a series of pulses on the oscilloscope. Hopefully you can see those. I know there's some flicker. That's because of the timing. Um, but there are eight pulses there and that corresponds with uh, the, the eight pulses that I would expect to see out of an eight channel transmitter. So you see eight pulses and then you see a delay and then the, the, the pattern repeats. So that's called a frame. So uh, it looks like you know we've positively identified the PPM uh, signal coming out of the, uh, the back of that, that transmitter. Um, just to demonstrate a little bit more, I'll, I'll change the timing so uh, now we can see not all of the pulses but the first few pulses in the stream and the first pulse on a JR transmitter is the throttle so if I move the throttle so I'll stick on the transmitter you can see that first pulse is you know moving along as I move this the throttle stick the second pulse of so this pulse is usually the aileron. So I'm going to move the aileron stick and you can see that one moving. The next one's the elevator, the third one. So there's the elevator and then the rudder. Right? That's the fourth pulse. Fifth is the landing gear. So when I flip this, well, we've lost our sink here, but so there we go. When I flip that, you can see it goes from one way from one extreme to the other. And then I don't remember where we go from there, you know, flaps, uh, auxiliary 2, auxiliary 3, and so on. But uh, the point is, that's definitely the line we need to run out for our PPM signal going into our Dragon Link. So I'm going to disconnect this, sh shut this down, and I'll go back to show you how what I did to rig up the cable to get from the back of the transmitter into the the uh, dragon link okay well I've got a cable here I'm showing you and I will put a picture of it up here in just a minute uh, that shows what it looked like before I started before I reworked it um, what I needed to do is find something that had a connector on it like this that would allow me to plug it into the uh, transmitter so that it would be able to plug in on these pins here right uh, hopefully you can see that so that's what I was looking for and what I found is this this actually came from I, I think it's Park Zone a Park Zone Super Cub and um, I, and I pulled it out of there and threw it in a box had it lying around and I think it was used for some sort of a mechanism for uh, a bomb release or dropping a, a parachute or something but it was sitting around not being used and uh, like I said I'll put a picture of it up in a minute shows what it looked like but basically what I had to do was um, cut one pin here because this is the six volts coming out we don't need that there's no point of running that outside of the transmitter and running a risk of having it go to ground somewhere so we'll cut that wire there and just left it like that and then on the other end just a connector or servo connector was was rigged up and then I took a magic marker and I marked the plus and the minus and the signal line so this actually plugs in now on the Dragon Link module where the black pin is on the right side so this plugs in here like so all right and then the other one the other side plugs into the transmitter with the signal pin on the top so when it comes time to plug that in 
signal pin plugs in here on the top. So here's what the diagram looks like. See if I can hold this up so you can see this better. You can be steady here. All right, so the top pin is the PPM signal. The six volts, we don't need it. Just chop it off. It doesn't go anywhere. No, no point in running the risk. Battery voltage comes out, and then we have ground. The last pin is the antenna, so we don't need to worry about that either. We're not even going to be using that, the antenna that's on the train, on the uh, JR transmitter. So there's no point in worrying about that. So that's pretty much it. So now that we understand how to make the cable, let's take a look at what it looks like. And I want to show you one other thing that I did. Is uh, obviously when I get around to it, this bracket will be put on to the handle here. The dragon link will be attached to the end of this, right, like so. And of course, our cable will be plugged in here and come out and plug into the dragon link. But. I didn't want to leave this all exposed like this. I just didn't want to leave this open to the weather and anything else. So I had um, a few extra RF modules lying about. And one of them, I uh, didn't have a crystal in. I don't know where I got this. I think I got this on eBay years ago. So basically took out the two screws. And if you decide to do this, when you take these screws out, it'll come up so far and then it's you have to get a an exacto knife and run it in under here because these two tabs are glued in so you have to break the glue joint but once you get that off you've got your RF module you can just take that out of there and put that aside it's still still a good module it can be used in the future but now you have this and um, you can take this and then put this back in place here like this. You can plug in your plug onto here. Of course, in my case, um, I'm going to have to open this hole a little bit to allow this connector to pass through it. Um, but I'm going to actually do a, take it a step further. Um, what I'm going to do is have this on here, plug this on, and then take this and cut out a little slot that's just big enough for that connector to pass through here right and then I'll have that bolted back on there so all I'll have now is simply just a little slot where the cable passes out of here and um, and then it, there's no permanent wiring or anything else you had to do on the inside. If you want to go back and run this on 72 megahertz, you simply pop out the module, put your old module back in, and you're good to go. Okay, so now I just wanted to take a moment to show you how this all works once it's done. Of course, I, it's not permanently put together, but uh, what I do have here is the cable plugged into the back of the JAR transmitter, the other end of the cable into the Dragon Link. All right, and so we'll sit that down and um, well this is the indication if you look at this you can see hopefully you can see the uh, LED on here next to the bind button when I turn the transmitter on that should turn green if everything is good which it does alright so um, then I'm gonna plug in uh, my uh, battery to the um, to the receiver So then uh, that powers up. Alright, we got a link. And so I have the throttle channel connected to this servo. And when I move the servo, move the throttle channel, we've got good control. So it looks like that's going to work. Okay, so at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and put up the wiring diagram. And um, I thank you for watching, and I hope you find this of some value. Uh, I know that I kind of hunted around for a while trying to determine how other people did it and really couldn't find anything on the uh, 8103. So hopefully this will help somebody else out. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.